limitation, no piano sound in audacity. Limitation, no epic movie trailer reverb in MuseScore. Solution, MuseCordacity. Unlimited. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's get started. So, you've heard it in countless movie trailers. No matter how much money they spend on this giant budget production, it all comes down to that trailer having those <coughs> tinkling piano chords, but they're not just these single notes played pleasantly on a common piano. They reverberate through this tremendously long haul of reverb, and in MuseScore, we have the ability to create the piano, but we only have access to that epic reverb, for many of us out there, through something like Audacity. Let me show you what we're going to do. So, for starters, let's get our piano notes in here, and I've preset this score to put it in E minor, and I decided since we're working with piano, <laughs> let's set the BPM of the tempo to 88 for 88 keys. So, let's go ahead and select the measure we want to start working in. I'm pressing the letter N to get our note entry into this, and I want a couple half notes, so let's go with the number six there, and I'm actually going to start way down here. And you might be saying to yourself, Margus, wait a second. Those movie trailer epic piano notes are usually from these incredibly twinkling high notes. That's correct. But just so that it's a little bit easier to read and we don't get out there into some big, big ledger lines, we're going to go ahead and stack this octave here. And we're going to come here. And remember we talked about the every other. And if you weren't tuned in for that video, let's talk about wherever we're at, so if this right here is our one of the minor, if we went to the very next line, that's going to be one above, but if we go to the every other of the space, that's going to be the third. Okay, So let's go up to that third, but over this one. There we go, and we get a nice stacked octave. Let's take a listen to that. Okay, we're headed in the right direction, but we want this way up there. Do we want it an octave higher? No. We want it two octaves higher, but we don't want to have ledger lines like going all the way up to here, right? So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our octave tools, which is under lines, and we're going to come down here, and very commonly we'll see this one here, and this is the 8VA tool, and that of course raises anything under this bracket an octave higher. But you know what? I know for sure I want it two octaves higher, so I'm going to bring this over and attach it to this, and there we go. Now, let's take a listen. So now it's way up there in the stratosphere, and if we want to, just for trial, to see which one sounds best, let's go ahead and check what it would be like if we just went one octave above. I think this kind of brings out the hammers. Hmm. Let's go ahead and go with this one. That sounds pretty good. I like how it brings out the high, but it also brings out some hammer. And of course, if we're in there, we're going to want that to segue on into a big, epic wave of baritone voices. So I have this baritone staff set up here, and we're going to come in here and drop a whole note for our chord. But first, let's enter note entry, and then I'm going to click the number, s is it seven? Yes, that's correct, seven. And we're going to come into our uh, responsive chord, which is going to be a nice E minor chord, OK? Um, I'm probably going to split up the one and the five down below. So let's come down to an E, which is right oh. there, and make this whole thing a heck of a lot easier to deal with if we zoom in there by pressing Control plus. And then we're going to come in oh. a fifth. And then I'm going to build a new minor chord above that, so we have the supported one and the fifth there. And then let's start on the next E here, and just stack these evenly because we're in a minor key, and we get a nice chord there. So now let's take a listen to how close we're getting. Okay, we're headed in the right direction. Buy your popcorn now. Okay, so. The next thing I think we're going to do is I think we want to have one slam down of the piano in the lows here. So let's go ahead and um, 
let's go ahead and select our measure here, note entry, and the number 7 for a whole note, and let's come down here to this E. There we go. And it's going to sustain out there. It's not going to be short like that tem demonstration sound we just heard. So let's come uh, out here, and we're going to take this, copy, come over to here, and drop this into that. Very good. What do you say? Repeat twice or tie? Let's hear it as a tie. Let's join this all together. And will it do both staffs? Yes, it does all that tying for us by just figuring out where we want to start and end. Back to the beginning. Escape out of everything. Here we go. Okay, I like it. This is some epic notation, but sound-wise, are we working with everything we can? Let's just double-check that we full-on bring this in, because we're looking for like a cinematic thing. We're not going for nice, pleasant, natural, in-the-room sound here. So... We hear it adds a nice natural reverb and chorus, but you know what? We are going for cinematic, and you've heard this on many, many movie trailers. So we're going to work with what we have here. Our notes are perfect. Our textures of our sound, they're perfect. These are notes and textures that are not available in Audacity. I suppose we could play around with some kind of you know, note in our sine wave production or pluck and such. However, this is a nice, genuine piano sound exactly where we want it. This is a nice, genuine set of baritones, a whole bunch of baritones, stacked up here together beautifully. Our core sounds are perfect. Let's go over now and do an export, okay? So we're going to come in here, previous thing, and then we have movie trailer piano, okay? And we're ready to go. Just in case we want to make changes later, we're going to go version 1. I'm going to go save. Export. Already done. And now, let's go on in to Audacity. Let's open up our file by going Import, Audio. And let's back out of wherever we were before. Movie Trailer Piano. And there we go. And this is our score file. This is our wave file. Let's bring it in. Okay, cool. Looking good. It looks like what we saw on screen there. And before we get that chord there, let's protect our ears a little bit. Back this off here. Let's hear what it sounds like in here after the export. It's sounding better already. Okay, cool. Now, there's a lot of different things we can do. Right off the bat, let's start with a duplicate, okay? So I'm going to back this out here, mute this, back this up, and now let's bring in another duplicate. A lot of times with reverbs, I immediately like to be working with, with two versions, okay? So one of them is going to have either no reverb or minimal reverb, and one of them is going to have a truckload of reverb, and then we can just play with levels to get our balance right. So let's go ahead and... Um, Let's just mute this so we know what we're doing. Over here, I'm going to choose... I don't want to normalize because I like our dynamics that I'm seeing there. And I just want to come out here to reverb. Room size is pretty huge. Reverberance is pretty good. Tone low. I, want, I think I want some, some highs in there. So let's just bring this up to about 50% to see what we're doing dealing with. And... Um, dragging. This looks pretty good. And of course, I want this wet only selected so that we get a ton. And I think you know that sounds a lot closer to our originally discussed vision for this project. So let's click OK and let's listen to just this puppy down here. Awesome. And we want to fix that tail. I'm kind of loving it. Let's go over here, a fade out to fix that tail. Clean it up. There we go.
awesome and we have a nice clean fade out. We could make that fade out a bit more subtle if we wanted to and you know how to do that. We just come in here, drop in as much of a fade out as we want and start eating away at the fade time and density from there if we want to. Now this was completely muted uh, because if we had two pictures here that were identical, we would get a lot of squashed phasing happening, which is not something we, we want out of this. And what we want instead is because these two tracks are now different, because this one is an entire new redraw because of the uh, epic w reverb we put onto it, this one up here now uh, is it literally a different sound, and I would like to have some of its the the more in the face percussive aspect. So let's see if we back this our original way off, and we have more reverb here in this one. Let's hear what we get. <laughs> I'm really favoring more of this. Just barely, I just barely want the attack of that first thing, okay? In fact, you know what I'm gonna do is from about right here, we don't even need to be exact because we have some space there. Let's come all the way out here and I'm gonna do a fade out right after it pull out of the pause mode there and we're going to do a fade out and we're going to take a listen beautiful and our reverberated version takes over at the end because this guy and you'll see this procedure a lot you can do a lot with this concept we have something here happening that fades out and then we have something here that is simply taking over through the delay of the reverb and then while it's doing its fade out this one is already gone so this one just takes over and this one is producing a nice reverb produced tail onto the end of it so let's hear how much we got out of muse cordacity okay so the concept of the two combined let's go over here to muse score this is what we started with an excellent sounding music notation program however this is what we brought in for our independent film that we want to sound giant where the power of one lets go the power of the other picks it up and together they are super strong they are unlimited we are unlimited i'll see you guys on the next one let's let the epic movie trailer piano of muse cordacity take us out